doing things that are outside of our comfort zone, and today we see the, cli the climax, the ending of the story, and why this book is so important. It's a little book tucked away in the Old Testament, right, in, in our version of the Bible, of the Old Testament, it comes after the book of, does anybody know what book? Judges. Judges, right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Ruth is the seventh book of our version of the Old Testament. Anybody tell me what book it comes after in the Old Testament that the Jewish community uses? Remember, I said last week that both Ruth and Boaz are people of integrity. Ruth is known as a woman of integrity. And, and some of you may know about a group that's out in the world that does ministry to women. And it's all based on a chapter in a book that comes after Psalms in our version of the Old Testament. It has 31 chapters. Proverbs 31, Ministries, is a ministry for women. And Proverbs chapter 31 talks about the woman of integrity. And Ruth follows Proverbs in the Jewish Bible because Ruth is the personification of a woman of integrity. So Ruth is our woman of integrity. And this morning we see Boaz, the man of integrity, right, who last week told Ruth that he was not the closest next of kin to do the what the Levitical law says has to be done, but he knows who the next of kin is. And he goes to the city gate, and he sits down, and as soon as he sits down, who shows up? What's his name? We know Elimelech is... Elimelech is Naomi's former husband and Chidon's and Malgnon's father, right? It would have been Ruth's stepdad. But what's the name of the next of kin? He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a name, right? Even Boaz says, come here, friend. He doesn't give him a name. Why doesn't he have a name? What? Because of what he refuses to do. Because of what he refuses to do. He refuses to uphold the, the law and to take care of his, his relatives, his, his kin. So he doesn't deserve to have a name. So he's unnamed. Because Boaz calls him over and when he finds out that he can get some land, right? Yeah, I'll take the land. That's great. I'll add it to my inheritance and my kids will be better off. And then he finds out, no, wait a minute. When you get this plot of field, you also have to take care of Ruth. He says, oh, now wait a minute. That's not part of the plan. That means that that field doesn't go to my kids. That means I've got to have a kid with her so that I can continue the name of Elimelech. Right? So I'm not going to do that. So Boaz takes off his shoe. And why? Because that's what they do. <laughs> It said that in the reading, actually, in case you were wondering. It said that. It said, because that's what they did. They would take off their shoes. And to be honest, I don't know why. My conjecture on why is because if you're not wearing shoes, you're lower than the people that are wearing shoes. Like when the, when the story that you know of is the prodigal son, the son returns from, from the far off land where he wasted all of his money. The father runs out to him and meets him. And what does the father give him? He gives him three things. He gives him a ring, he gives him a robe, and he gives him shoes. Not just because he wants him to not carry the dust into the house, because the, the floors in the house are dust too. It's because the shoes say that he is not a slave, that he is a son and part of the household. Shoes were very important in that day, and you had to be able to afford them to have them. So to take your shoe off in the presence of somebody else says, this is something that I'm willing to do. So he takes off his shoe and he acquires the land, and then he and Ruth are married, because he is more concerned with taking care of Ruth than he is about acquiring the field. He's more concerned with taking care of his relatives and his kinfolk than he is about acquiring any more wealth. He's more concerned about upholding what is right in the law 
than what he is going to gain. But he gains so much because he gains a wife and he gains a son, right? And Naomi gains so much. Did you hear what, what the women of the town said about Naomi? Verse 14, then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. For he shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you is more to you than seven sons has borne him. Right? Remember in this day and age, what were women? Property. The women just said that Naomi is more important that Ruth is more important to Naomi than seven sons. Does that mean anything? Ruth is really important. She can do more for Naomi than, than seven sons could have done. Than the two sons that she lost, plus five more. Right? So Ruth is going to do something huge for Naomi, and already has, right? And Naomi didn't even get it. Naomi, back at the end of chapter 1, when she returned to Bethlehem with, with Ruth, her daughter-in-law, because the famine had grown, right? She returned back, and she said, don't call me Naomi, call me, does anyone remember? Mara, you would, of course Mara, you would know that, right? <laughs> and what does Mara mean? Bitterness, right? And who was standing next to Naomi at that point in time? I'll give you a hint. It's four letters. It starts with an R and ends with an Oof. <laughs> right? Ruth was standing right next to her, and Naomi said, said, I've lost everything. But she couldn't even see Ruth standing right next to her. She couldn't see the blessing of this woman who left her homeland, who left her family, to connect herself with, with someone and come to a place where she was going to be a foreigner and an outsider and an outcast. And then was able to continue the lineage of Elimelech and Chilion and Malon, right? She was able to bear a son. And she bears a son for Boaz. And what is the name of this son? I could ask Sarah to come back up and read it for us again. The name of the son is Obed. And why is Ruth's story included in the Old Testament? Why is Ruth's story something that we as Christians need to know, right? It's right there in the last three verses. Or four verses, sorry. Right. Now these are the descendants of Perez. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Ammonabed, Ammonabed of Nashon, Nashon of Solomon, Solomon of Boaz, Boaz of Obed, Obed of Jesse, and Jesse of David. And who is David? King. Right? In our book, in our Bible, the next two books are the books of not Kings. The book before Kings. Samuel. First and second Samuel. And first and second Samuel tell the story of David. <laughs> David. Right? And David becomes a great king over the, the, the country of Israel, right? David is a, is, a, is a king that restores people to faith. He's known as a pillar of our faith. And David is the great, 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 great grandfather of? Jesus. Ruth is in the lineage of Jesus. You see, Ruth is not only a savior to Naomi. Ruth is part of the lineage of the Savior to each and every one of us. See, Ruth is only one of, I believe it's three, I'll have to go look it up, women named in the lineage of Jesus, which we will actually study coming up here in January, right? Because we're studying, start studying the book of Matthew in January. And the first one is the lineage of Jesus. That'll be a riveting sermon. Make sure you're here that week. Right. So and so we got, so and so we got, so and so we got, so and so too. Perez, Ram, Hezron, right? So, Ruth 
is the great, great, what, great grandmother, great grandmother, great, great, is the great, great grandmother of David, who is in the lineage of Jesus. So Ruth is important to us because if it wasn't for Ruth coming back with Naomi, Boaz would not have had a son named Obed, and Obed would not have continued the lineage of Elimelech, which gets us to Jesus. As you see, we say that one little act of kindness is not going to change the world, but Ruth's did. Ruth's act of kindness to stay with her, her mother-in-law to make sure that she's taken care of led to not only her mother-in-law being taken care of over these great many years until her mother-in-law passed away, but it also ended in each and every one of us having the salvation that we have because Jesus was able to be born and come to this world. So when you think that doing one little thing is not going to help anything, it is. Doing that one simple little thing could change the life of one person and therefore impact all of the world. So just remember that. And know that Ruth's story is important because Ruth gets us to Jesus. And Jesus is important because Jesus rescues us from everything. We learned that in PBS. Ask Melanie and she'll tell you all about it. She's not paying attention. But she will to you when you ask her about it. And don't miss the blessings that are in your life, right? Because Naomi missed Ruth at the beginning until someone else showed her. And sometimes it takes someone else telling us about the blessings that happen that we see as bad things. Because everything that bad is not necessarily bad. God works in and through everything to make His will be done. So do good and act justly. And remember what Ruth did and live with integrity because that's all that God ever asks us to do. And share that love that He's given to each and every one of us with all the world. Thank mm -hmm. you.